What did God do? Bible said that God went down and confound their languages that allow them to start speak different language. So everybody who could understand each other just go over there. So. Everybody who could understand each other just go over there. So. And this is why the separation came. So now, bear in mind that everybody understood the one principle that Nimrod, Simiramis, and Tumors were the major gods. So what happened now? When them go down to Egypt, when them go down to where is known as Asia, when them go down to where is known as India, the names might have changed. But the concept remains the same. Is everybody still with me? So we see here, Nimrod is the god of ancient times. We see we have Nimrod, who is the sun god. Um, Semiramis, who is also his mother. Um, she's known in scripture as the queen of heaven. And here we have um, Tumas, which is Nimrod's son. So in other words, you have the father, son. Yeah, that's where it comes from. Now what happened was when Nimrod died because Nimrod was a ruthless man they used to sacrifice children in his honor under his name Malak they used to sacrifice yes there they used to sacrifice children and notice I see that amount opening tonight I feel good there yeah. you see I say something I see amount open good continue to let them out they used to sacrifice to him now after Nimrod died, his wife, which is his mother, came up with the concept in order to allow her husband's memory to remain. She said that her son, Tumaz, was Nimrod incarnate. So her son is Nimrod reborn. Are you with me, everybody? Oh, sister, you're not know, with me. In order to let it appear that Nimrod was really a deity, was really divine, when our son was born, she presented him to the world that this was Nimrod reborn. You're following it? You get it? So Nimrod, her son, her son, which is Tumas, which was born on the 25th in the winter solace, is now celebrated as the promised savior of the world. And this is why it was easy for King um, Constantine to present the pagan worship with Christianity. Because he said, boy, them similar in or so. What's the big deal? You guys believe in the concept of a one God and, and believe in the promise of a Savior. We also believe in the promised seed also. So he merged them. And this is how December 25th became the day celebrated as the birthday of Christ. But its origin has nothing at all to do with God, not Jesus. It is in celebration to Nimrod so every time someone talks about this world December 25th and Christmas celebration you are partaking in idolatrous worship now bear in mind tonight I am not here to push something on anybody's throat I'm here to present to you what is truth you think about it when it is presented whosoever will it's up to you Jesus as I said before had 72 disciples once after he told them truth only 12 did left so again I say it's up to you after you've heard the truth next slide now the question is asked oh wow the Christmas tree some of love the Christmas tree is it some of you can't wait for December to decorate 
Oh, nice Christmas trees. Some of we never usually have Christmas trees first time, but we make sure say, we decorate them to the very curtain them. The fine dangles and the plugins. My God, it was an awesome thing for me first time. If you don't have pepper light in a Christmas time, and you feel as if nothing I'm going for you. Yeah? And, 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 and it seems so simple. All these things, you know, then come across as, so what's wrong with that? Wait, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> the Christmas tree and the decorating of the Christmas tree existed long before the birth of Christ. And the decorating of the tree, if you notice, this is, a, this is an ancient painting. You can find them in Egyptian paintings. You can find them in, 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 in Hindu artifacts. And even as far as in Buddhism, in Asia, you can find, trace the decorating of what is known as the evergreen tree from back in those days. Now, the amazing thing is the building of tall buildings, or the, 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 yes, the, the erection, no pun there, of tall buildings has a deep meaning. There's a deep reason why Nimrod said he wanted to build what? A tower that stood up high. You ever notice in America the thing called the Washington Monument that's straight tall? Yes. Alright. So I'll get back to it in a little bit. Now, when we talk about the evergreen tree, Simaram is presenting this idea that you know, there was a Babylonian teaching that they found a, 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 a tree that was dead and out of it sprung another tree and that tree was worshipped as an evergreen tree which means life in other words what Simiramis did was she came up with the concept and the idea that as Nimrod was dead now he sprung up alive again in his son Thomas. So the tree, evergreen tree, represents his life force. Not only does it represent his life force, but it represents his manhood. Can't drop a pin. You're not here, no? In case, let me break it down for you. In America, most Jamaicans don't really use the reeds, decorating of the, the reeds. But in America, they use the reeds and they decorate them. The reed represents the womb of Semiramis. The evergreen tree represents the fallops of Nimrod. And let's not use any big word. The word for fallops is penis. So it represents the erect evergreen tree represents Nimrod's manhood. And remember, you know, this is, I mean, when we think about it, that's where they, they talk about life. That's where life comes from, from in the womb and in the penis. You can't talk about it in a church, are you? Yes. Okay, sorry, if you don't know I'm here. So the bottom line is, when they decorate the tree, they would decorate it with all sorts of fandangles. One of the things we don't normally put on on the uh, Christmas tree them and they look around something them. Yeah. You don't know, even know what those are. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, this decoration is in celebration of the lifehood of Nimrod. Now, when you have it in your house and you're decorating it, bear in mind that you are partaking in idolatry. We're not talking about a simple little thing here like I showed you a scripture for those who came in late. There are scriptures that I showed you earlier to show you how God feels about us partaking in any form, even our own, of idolatry. And here, what Jeremiah had to say about it. 
Jeremiah 10, verse 2. Let's read. Uh-huh. All right, we're going to stop and we're going to read again like, you know, high school, take out the primary school thing. So let's do that again. All right. Go ahead. Christmas tree is an idol. It represents a god. It represents Nimrod. It represents Nimrod's life and resurrection. And anyone who has it and place it in their houses, you are partaking in nothing more than idolatry. The whole decoration all of these things, you can find them nowhere in scripture. All I am saying to you tonight is if you have an issue with it, what I want you to do, because I am using Bible. Bear in mind tonight, I am not giving you my opinion since. What I'm doing is I am giving you scripture. So if you can find scriptures to show that the prophets did this, the patriots did this, and the apostles did this, then it's quite fine. If you can find anywhere in scripture through the book of Acts, let's just go there. Find one place in the book of Acts. That's where the church started. And find where they practice any such thing. You will never find it in scripture. But these things exist in scripture. But where did they exist? Who was the one who was practicing them? Pagans. Heathens. And as I said, all that is done is it is just repackaged, rebrand, and sell out to you again. And everybody jump up and say, oh, it's, it's, it's now saying Jesus. From once you say Jesus, it's quite fine. So they remove the name of Nimrod and say God or Jehovah. They remove the name of Semiramis and say Holy Ghost. They remove the name of Jesus, we have tumors. And say it's Jesus. So all of this is now presented. You ever notice the picture with Mary, Joseph, and Jesus? You ever, you ever notice that for some reason the, the Christ, Jesus that is presented, always have one little circle on his head, look a light. Huh? Yes. That is coming from Saturn, the god Saturn, the sun god. That is all that is. But they just repackage it, rebrand it. Say a Jesus, you idiot them now. Oh, yes, a Jesus, make a worship him. <laughs> it's big brother. It's fat man, they start peeping at them house. Now, before I go into the full definitions and so on, what I'm going to do, I'm going to appeal to no common sense. It's no common sense I want to appeal to first. Santa Claus. As I said, what I'm going to do first is appeal to the common sense. Now, if Christ or if Christmas is about Christ, where does Santa Claus come from? Common sense may I talk about now. If Christmas is about Christ, where does Santa Claus come from? Bear in mind, I'm show now while I go to Christmas and I'm not for with Jesus. But let us reason on the basis of the premise that Christmas, you know, let's just use it in a few minutes. Let's just say Christmas was about Christ. Where did Santa Claus thing come from? What is that concept 
Where did he come from? And if you notice, Santa Claus normally target what? Children. He knows when you are sleeping. He knows when you are awake. He knows when you have been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. That not sound like a man's man around, do Talk to me now, somebody. Right now, if you put some music behind that, some horror music, I straight up show me I advertise. Now, this whole thing of Santa Claus, and remember, no, no, Santa Claus also have a Mrs. Claus as well. So anybody who wear any form of female outfit representing Santa Claus, you are Mrs. Claus. <laughs> and you are representing a demonic entity. You are representing a idol. Oh God. If I you don't say ouch. <laughs> you see, no. Moloch is the same Nimrod who they offered children to. This is why Santa Claus targets children. The word Santa. But look at it closely. It, 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 it rhymes very closely with Satan. Very, very closely with Satan. But Santa was another word that they used to call Nimrod. Because I told you that he went by a different name. So through Asia Minor, he was known by that name Santa. He was known as the fire god. And this god, you can read for yourself Psalm 106, 34 to 43. This god was a god that they would sacrifice children to. They would throw children to him and sacrifice him. So when they repackage your Christianity thing, then come now and say, listen, Santa Claus, come to bring presents for kids. And you come down through where? Where? All right, all right. I got a witness over here. Can help me teach? You get it, not you? Yeah. What you just get out of I didn't even touch the part about the log, the burning log. So the reason why them have him coming down to the chimney with the burning log is in reference to him being the fire god. Since, you don't live in a deep world, you know? You don't understand the world, you don't live in a you know? Some people just like, get up every day and just come like some robot, not understand. Since the world where you live in a and not just so. Everything come with meaning. The very songs they want to listen to come in with meanings. I don't have time to go into it tonight. But you remember the song by Rihanna and Brother? No, for those of you who don't understand, when Rihanna just start out, when Rihanna just start out, you know, she start out very ordinary. But ever since she woke up with Rockefeller and Rock Nation, which is Jay-Z, Rihanna's album, where she released after she hooked with Jay-Z. Anybody know the name of the album? Mm -hmm. The name of the album was A Good Girl Gone Bad. And in that song, it is filled with nothing but demonic symbols and Illuminati symbols where Jay-Z comes out as the one that is now indulging her and enticing her as the devil, putting her into the Illuminati. And the very umbrella, you see the water, the mature water is not water. It signifies semen. That's why in a, one, one, one section of the song, the Syriana, she's in a triangle. The triangle in Illuminati symbols means the actual fog-ups are a penis. Are you with me, saints? There's a point in the song. I forgot to do it back one night. There's a point in the song when Rihanna just bent over and said so. Yes, yes. But when you look closely, it is the face of Baphomet. Yes. You see, Rihanna's last album. What is the name of Rihanna's last album? Oh, by the way, we know them stuff there. In case you don't understand, I know this stuff. 
And you have to know them in order to present it back to you to tell you what not to do. Rihanna's last album is called Anti. And on the cover of the album is a picture with Rihanna's a little girl with a crown on her head. But the crown cover up her eyes. All of that has significant meaning. And the Catholic Church, what the Catholic Church do you know? When they came up with, 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 with the concept of Santa Claus, what is the name? What did they tell you? This Catholic Church tell you that Santa Claus is homage to who? Who? There's a person, man. Saint who? Start then the missionary. Saint Nicholas. They said that Santa Claus is named, you know, is paying homage to Saint Nicholas. Just like them telling us, Valentine is coming paying homage to Saint Valentine when nothing goes up. No, 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 goes up. Let's read what the book of Revelation, as I said to you. It's there, it's there in the Bible. Because we don't have much time to read the word. Let's go down. Revelation 2 6. Let's do that again. Bear in mind that the Lord was talking to the church. And this is the book of Revelation. And he was speaking about the doctrine of the Nicolotian. Nicolotian, which he's saying that he hates the doctrine of the Nicolotian. No. Saints, in the book of Revelation, there are seven churches that the Lord sent to. And spoke about, I should say. And out of the seven, is only one of them that was keeping true to the word of God. As a matter of fact, he said that one of them is the seat of Satan. Are you with me, saints? It means that not because we baptize in Jesus' name, speak in tongues, shake. That still don't mean that we are doing right in God's sight. We cannot do what we feel comfortable to do and think that we are okay. The Bible says that your body is a living sacrifice. No question. We said it already. No question. Tell me which sacrifice don't hurt our cause something. That's a family thing. All right, so let me, let me, let, that's why I started out by saying, the family them come from Grand Prix, yeah. and it's according to how the season is set. Now, we the church are not against family and coming together as family. What we are against is when you decide say you, you come together so you go cook on a Christmas dinner and you go having a Christmas cake we you go have on a Christmas party we don't know trees and all of this and all that and you're giving out a presents so if you come together with your family and you cook food to your family and they have it there not wrong with that is it is it true for me yes. it is a holiday and we have no control over that that's why I draw for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego for you. To let you know that when you're under a Babylonian system, there are certain things you don't have any control over. But when it comes to you actually doing this or doing that, let's say for instance now, him say you can cook, but you have to go dress up as Santa Claus. <laughs> That's a different thing now in the brother there. Everybody following me so far? What I'm saying is that there comes a point where you have to withdraw from anything that resembles our touch. Paganism. Is, is, is the church with me? Yes. We're going to do it. Yes, go ahead. So, go ahead, yes. In addition to that, you can go cook a meal or whatever, and you may need to eat with them. But let's say afterwards they start to put them kind of music, dancing, carrying on, then that's the time you probably need to take your leave. So it's okay to fellowship with your family, do your yes. talking and your yes. Christmas. Yes, that's a word. That's a word. 
Listen. Thank you very much. Put your hands together for that. Go ahead. Well, Sorrel came from hell. Hell. Imagine tonight if me going to say Sorrel come from hell. <laughs> Nimrod was the one who planted Sorrel. No, 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 no. no. Can you imagine? Again, 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 my dear. Again, my dear. Bear in mind what I'm saying to you is that I don't want nobody to say. They would not plant, well, well, let me use the Christmas tree again, a fern, fern tree. Pine. pine. I don't want nobody to say, you're not going to plant any pine tree in the yard because I hate any use for a um, mineral. No, man perverts things of God. Nothing is wrong with having pine tree in the them shape up them and they look nice. But when they deck them out and put on things, that's when it becomes wrong. So, sorry, my dear, I will tell you this. If you have an issue with drinking sorrel and you have it at home, don't just bring it normally. Sweeten it and carry it to me. I will dispose of that sorrel. I will make sure. I will make sure, my dear, you don't see that sorrel again. I guarantee you. So we, we, we have to understand context. We have to understand context. If we do things without context, we are going to find problems. I know that not everybody that is here tonight will accept what has been taught. I know there are many of you who probably will be texting tonight. Pastor, I can't have a shot. I think in business that. I'm certain of that. Don't listen. Don't get me thinks I'm one of the person who said whenever I teach, you know, everybody I receive more a lot of men of Jesus. And even him they never receive. So why would I think I'd be any less? Jesus said, Listen, I am the green tree. And then they accept me. He said, What more? What less about you who is the dry tree? So don't think I am of this, this, this notion that when I teach, everybody will receive it. No. It's only a few. And guess what? You see the few? I am thankful to God for the few. And for the few, you're why I do this. Because trust me, if I was to look, I'm telling you since, if I was to look at some things, I teach, sometimes I teach some things. And then guess what? And then you look. They see them still with us, they people them don't look. They people them still at it. Now, if I was to take, me tell you already, you know. Say, so if I was to take that up on me, you think me and Moses, me and it. Me want to see the promise and... Moses had low his anger and Moses was justified because Moses called to the people and no matter what, Moses could never get them under control. And I mean, no, 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 me go get no rock. I'm not getting to go into the promise. I'm sorry for you. If me tell you, you say, one dish you over there, sir. So, who am my own experience? Guess what? Say God, you turn a message to a message, now the messenger arrive. Committed to the journey, so me now go backslide. Looking through the spirit and a physical eyes. Who to God me testify. Know me at the work of God and the boss. My whole life, he endured. Take me from the mud and put